Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I just want to give you guys some updates. Now, to be honest, I've been out of things for about a three week period because of the day job and I've been really, really tied up. However, a lot has gone on over that period and I have done a couple of videos, but I wanted to give you guys a quick catch up on where we were at with the various firmwares, what's been going on, as well as something new from DJI. Just to get started, I'll go on to the Mavic 2 first. Last week, DJI pushed out uh, new firmware for the Mavic 2 series, version 1.00.0200. Now, this one adds a couple of very long-awaited features. The big one being they have finally added in the precision landing feature. So this is that thing everyone kicked off about when it first released it didn't have. It's now got it. So it will behave like all of the other models of recent times where it will land in a very tight spot right down to the point where it took off from as long as it takes an image of it when it takes off but it's there it's all sorted it's been brought back um they've changed uh, some of the settings they've increased the shutter speed up to two seconds again uh, on the hyperlapse that was removed i believe actually they've added lateral vision system for poi 2.0 everyone sort of said it's got side sensors but they weren't working in poi 2.0 which was a bit odd well they do now so it's nice that they've added that there's a couple of other things that they've done. Added voice alerts for active track, uh, on-screen display when shooting hyperlapse, and optimized vision system. To be honest, I've not flown this firmware myself because I have been up to my eyes in it. However, I've had a good look around the internet. There's been no complaining about it whatsoever. No issues. It's doing exactly what it says it should be doing. When I say no issues, no issues on mass anyway. There's no known bugs or anything like that. Go ahead, update. As far as I'm concerned, you should have no problems with it whatsoever. Next, moving over to the Inspire 2. Now, we had the big update for that on the 16th of uh, November, and this was version 0300 or 01.02.0300. Now, this was the big update that had been in beta for quite some time. I've been monitoring this one closely. I've flown it myself, and I've got to say, it's probably the best update we have had for the Inspire 2. It pretty much fixes all all of the little issues people were having for me gimbal drift stopped aircraft your drift stopped uh, landing gear warning error messages stopped random gimbal movements when you change flight mode stopped it flies much better much more locked in it solves for me pretty much everything that makes the aircraft fantastic um now, there is a little bit of confusion, though, around this update because, obviously, this was released at the same time as all of the battery issues with the TB50 and the TB55s, and there is nothing in these release notes about battery issues resolution at all. There's nothing at all whatsoever. However, the noises I've got is this update does contain a battery update, which we know it does, and it does help resolve the issues with regards to the TB50s. However... Here and now, I am still going to strongly recommend you fly by your battery voltages. Before you take off, check your battery is at 100%. Check your cell voltages are over 4.25 volts per cell. Don't just rely on that capacity. Make sure you look at your voltages, your overall pack voltage, as well as your individual cell voltages. Again, all cells over 4.25 volts per cell is fully charged if your capacity is showing 100 percent and your voltages are showing 3.9 volt don't fly something is wrong so whilst there is nothing said in this we believe it's resolved the issue or at least begun to resolve the issue but watch your voltages simple as that alongside this one was the update for the m200 series as well and this does say about what it's resolved around the battery issues and it's also introduced a couple of other additional checks as well now i should be clear those additional checks have only been put on the m200 and they are not on the inspire 2 now um they do say in these notes that they've resolved the issue of false high state of charge reading with the battery with the soc displayed the app higher than the actual charge voltage alongside that they have introduced two new features. And number one is that it will check the state of charge before takeoff. So it checks the battery versus the voltage for you. And if there's an issue, it should warn you. Then in flight, it will monitor the capacity versus voltage. And if the two get outside a certain range, it will either trigger return to home 
or the aircraft will go into fail-safe landing. Now, I have been watching this quite closely, and this, this last two things here does seem to have caught people out a little bit. And where um, the battery picks up an issue, it will either return to home or uh, critically land and just basically force you into landing. I can't say for certain has there been some false uh, positives, but it appears one or two people have had it happen when they wouldn't have expected it. It is something to be aware of. I would not push your TB55 batteries too hard. Fly them for what you need to. Use your packs. Keep them warm, but make sure they're fully charged. But don't push them right down to 20%. Follow the advice that's been given. Something else they've also introduced into this is a um, check to make sure the battery is fully charged and make sure that it is above 20 degrees C. Now, we've had the checks on the older aircraft before that it wouldn't let you arm below 15. They've introduced that on the M200 that it's 20 degrees. Um, it's not on the Inspire 2 either, which is interesting. It is on the M200, but again, that's something else they haven't put onto the Inspire 2. Here and now, it is probably a good thing that they haven't put these things onto the Inspire 2, if I'm honest. As long as you're flying by your voltages, as I said earlier, you should be fine. There should be no issues. One last thing on the batteries before I move on. The firmware on the M200 batteries is a newer version than comes in the 0300 update for the Inspire 2. So if you have both aircraft and you update all your batteries on your M200, you will actually get a firmware mismatch error on your Inspire 2 when you try to put them in because it's actually on a slightly older version of firmware. Here and now, the advice is to not mix packs, okay? Whilst you can use the TB50s with the newer firmware that is part of the M200 update on the Inspire 2, the advice would be to keep them separate. Your Inspire 2, update everything to 0300 and use that. Your M200, update everything to version 0102 and then keep your battery separate a second because you don't want the batteries constantly going up and down in firmware. Okay, look, you can ignore that message if you have to, but there's a lot of unknowns around this here and now, and the information is still a little bit sketchy. DJI is still working on this whole battery film. It's not totally over. There will be another update in the very near future to resolve it. So here and now, just keep them separate until we know what's going on. Next, moving over to the Crystal Sky. Uh, last week, they pushed out version 4.3.4 of the DJI Go 4 app for the Crystal Sky. So if you haven't had this update yet, you need to go into your DJI Go 4 app, go under Me, go under Settings, and click Check for Update when your Wi-Fi is on, and it will update it to the latest version. It adds all the little stuff we've been waiting for for the Mavic 2 as well. So it's worth having, if especially if you're using it with the Mavic 2 with the Crystal Sky. Um... Other than that, the only other thing that's happened is this. Uh, a DJI's event this week, probably the worst kept secret in the industry leaked out or was put out, um, which is called the Osmo Pocket. Now, we first saw this thing months ago on the desk with the leaked pictures of the Mavic 2. We knew it existed and what it is is a miniature version of the Osmo. They've taken that tiny camera design which they've used on the uh, Mavic Pro and now the Mavic 2 series and the uh, Mavic Air and they've put that onto a tiny handheld gimbal and it's basically got all of the same features we had with the original Osmo in a package that is just remarkably smaller. It's as simple as that. Now I haven't seen this. I haven't had a chance to play with it i'd love to get my hands on one i'm not going to be able to order one for a while unfortunately um i'm not in the position to be able to do it however it does look a nice little bit of kit and it's got some interesting features that it allows you to connect it up to your smartphone via this little port on the side here you slide in the adapter that fits your phone either usb-c or lightning and you can connect it directly to your phone, but there's a whole host of accessories available for it as well, an extension arm, as well as extra buttons and a Wi-Fi base. You know, for the price of this thing, I think it's £339 in the UK. Let's actually have a look. What is it in the UK? $349 in the US, and it's roughly the same price in British pounds. You know, it is it is a bargain. It really, really is. Um. There has been a little bit of confusion, though, over it. Um, it's 
around the 1080p mode, whether it's got 120 frames a second or not, a lot of the reviews that went out for this, the review models all had 120 frames a second in 1080p. However, the spec doesn't show that. Now, here and now, the understanding I have is that will come via an update in the future. That isn't 100% confirmed and I wouldn't hold me to it. But the rumours I've heard is it will come on a firmware update at some point. Here and now it supports both uh, 4K and 1080p at 30 and 60 frames a second. A couple of people have commented that it's able to do 4K at 60 frames a second, but why isn't the Mavic Zoom? Okay, it's down to processing and the way they do it. It is 100 megabits a second as well. So, you know what? It's fantastic spec in such a small platform it really really is um it's a really interesting product from dji you know we saw a leak of it a little bit uh back and it's really interesting to have a micro gimbal in a product this size for me the absolute key with this will be about the microphone how well is the sound quality on this because okay look the guys who use these things professionally will use an external microphone that's that's a fact however the average user will not want to do that. And audio quality was always the Achilles heel on the original Osmo. I really hope they've done a lot of work on that with this because it will be important. I've watched a few reviews on it and so far I like what I've seen. I'm hoping... And I'm hoping at some point we may see a version of this with a nice one-inch Hasselblad sensor on the top. That is something that gets me very excited, um, especially for uh, motion lapse and time lapse. So let's see what happens in the future. Here and now we just have this model. However, I would not be at all shocked to see a version of this in the future with a similar camera to we have on the Mavic 2 Pro with the one inch sensor. It, it's asking for it, it really, really is. Here and now you've only got the model with the standard half point three inch sensor. Um, and there's a new app for it as well, which is called Mimo, and that'll be out uh, when the device launches in a week and a bit's time. It's about a week, week and a half, it'll be in people's hands. So it'll be interesting to see what people think about it. If you've ordered one, let me know in the comments for this video. I will be really interested to see. And something that DJI have been doing a lot of recently is accessories. There will be a whole host of accessories for this thing, as you can see here. And it's really something they're pushing when they release their products now, is to have a range of accessories available for it on day one as well it's 349 dollars in the us and it's going to be available from the 15th um yeah it, it, if you're interested in a small handheld gimbal go check it out that's pretty much it for this video it was just an update one to hopefully catch you guys up on some things i have been absolutely up to my eyes in it with um various other things so i haven't been able to do some videos for a little while however we will be getting back on the horse very very shortly i've put a few more out today that's it please do subscribe to the channel there's a link in the bottom right hand corner if you want to support the channel there are some links in the description as well and you can order the osmo pocket there as well there's a link for that so if you want to support the channel and you can order it please do use that it helps us keep the channel going and hopefully we might be able to get our hands on one that's it thank you very much for watching i'll do another video again soon